Hello everyone. In this video today, we're going to look at an exciting feature which is incremental refresh in Power BI. So if you're into that, stay tuned. In today's video, I wanna talk a little bit about incremental refresh. So what is incremental refresh to begin with? Incremental refresh allows you to refresh the data set in Power BI. And instead of refreshing all the data that you have, you can actually refresh a part of that. With, of course, as a benefit that your refreshes will be quicker, your refreshes will be more reliable because the Power BI refresh doesn't have to work for such a long time. And on top of that, you don't use as much compute resources because, of course, you only need to refresh a part of that. Now, before you can work with that, you need a pro license at least. You also need to make sure that the data that you work with supports query folding. So, for example, a SQL database, uh, any sources that support query folding that, in fact, uh, support transforming the steps in Power Query to a SQL statement, for example. Now, if you have those requirements, you can actually get started with incremental refresh. And let's just have a look at how that could work. So let's imagine we're working with a file like we're looking at right now. This file, if I go to my uh, uh, screen here, is a file that's 150 MBs. And I actually don't have so much data in this one. I have a lot of rows, but if I look at the data set, there's just three columns here. And the size is mostly because of the unique sales keys that are in there. So let's say you find this too big. Maybe it's not 150 MBs, maybe it's even 10 times as much. Then you could look into incremental refresh if you fulfill all the requirements that I just spoke of. And how can you configure that? To configure that, you go to uh, Power Query, first of all. And in Power Query, let's see. In Power Query, you need to have a table that contains a date because incremental refresh needs to have a date column to actually apply the policy on. Now, the table we have here has a date key, which is actually a date time key. So that works just perfectly fine. And if you want to get started with incremental refresh, you're going to need some parameters. And the parameters need to be with a certain name so that incremental refresh recognizes this. So let's start by creating some parameters. So you can go here to manage parameters. Then you click on new. And the first one can call, you can call it range start. And you can't just call it range start. You have to call it range start because otherwise it won't work. <laughs> And make sure this one is of the date time type. And then you can just type something like, uh, maybe the start of your period should be the 1st of 2022, the 1st of January. Then you wanna make a new one, which is uh, going to be called range end. And your range end one needs to also have the data type daytime. And perhaps this one is gonna be up till today, but it doesn't really matter because Power BI will later on, when we configure the settings, will decide themselves what dates to pick. So you can just fill in the date here that you like. So I could just say like uh, maybe around today, the 1st of May. Perfect. Now, if you click OK here, you'll find that these range parameters are, are created. And even though I only filled in the dates, you'll find that there's actually a date time here now. So that's all that you need. Now, what's left in Power Query is that for all of the sources you're going to use, you need to apply a filter. So the incremental refresh uh, function will actually use that filter later on to make sure your data set gets smaller. So the easiest way to do that is to click on the column, on the arrows, take a daytime filter, and then in the bottom it says custom filter. In your custom filter, uh, you can do something here with the pop-up box. So you could say that, first of all, the, t the date key has to be after or equal to, and then you select your parameter right there. So it needs to be after or equal to your range start, and it needs to be before, and then you can select the other parameter, which is range end. Now you can press OK. Exactly. So the step that we created here actually performs the filters. And one thing I recommend you to do, even if your uh, data source supports query folding, double check if the step that you just filtered on also still is folded to the server. And you can do that by right clicking on the step and seeing if that view native query step, the two before last one is, uh, is still uh, available and not grayed out. So if I click on this one, 
I actually see that all these steps that I have here were translated to a SQL query. And the last step right there is going to help, up with, help us with the incremental refresh. So make sure this works. And actually, if it's grayed out, perhaps you can move that step a little bit earlier because the order doesn't matter as long as the query folding works. Now with this in mind, we can press OK and refresh the data set. Let's fast forward this a little bit. And with that, we now have a data set that only has the, the data within the date range, which is the, the whole of 2022. Okay, sure, that works. And if I would save this file right now, one of the benefits, of course, is that our file size will decrease. And if I look up here, it's now 17 MBs. That already helps. If you want, you could even reduce the data more. Now, the next step is to actually configure the incremental refresh. For that, you can go to the data tab. And in the data tab, there is a table here. And that table, uh, if you want the, the schedules refresh to be configured on this one, you right click on it and you go to the incremental refresh part. And this will make a pop-up appear that shows all the incremental refresh policies. Okay, now the first step is to select the table which you wanna apply your fil filters on. So if you have multiple tables where you wanna configure your schedule refresh, you can select all the tables here and apply a different refresh policy on each one of them. Now let's see how it works, which is this one. So we click on incrementally refresh the table. And the first step looks for us at where we need to start archiving our data. So how long do we actually want to get data in the model? So let's say we have five years of data. And actually, we just need to see three years of that because everything older we don't even look at. Then what you could do is you could write three and then say that you want the last three years here. So it now says in the bottom right there, the three years before your refresh date, that's uh, how long it will archive everything. And if you wanna see the exact dates, then hold on because we will see that right now. Now, first we're gonna do the next step. And that is how, which data do we wanna incrementally refresh? So we actually archive up to three years ago, but when do we actually need to refresh our daily data? So maybe you only need to see data that is newer than two months ago because you know that everything that's older than two months will never change anymore in your database. Well, this is the part where you specify that. So I could say we just need two full months. And after clicking this, you will find that Power BI now shows that your archive is the first of 2019 until today. And, uh, or did, and then at some point at, down here, you will find that there is a period of two months after that archive that will be refreshed on every refresh. So this is very helpful that this date series shows you what happens. So these are the fundamentals. Okay. Now there are some more options down here, some optional settings, and I won't go into too much detail about them, but this first one is about using direct query together with incremental refresh so that there is a bit of history that's uh, archived and then there's a uh, some direct query, which is always fresh, but you need a premium per user license for this, or you need premium capacity. So that's for another video. Then something else you could select is to refresh only complete months. You might be working in the financial administration and only after the months are fully booked, it makes sense to show the data. So this helps with that. And lastly, there's another option that says detect any data changes. And this works in a fun way as well, because some databases actually record what the mutation date is. So let's say that you have a data set and you can historically change your records. You might have a column that shows when a record was changed. Now with this option right here, you can actually refer to that column and say like, okay, I only want everything with a mutation date that was yesterday or at least the last three days, only those to be refreshed. And in that way, you can actually reduce the amount of data that you refresh even more, but your data needs to support this. So on a side note, this is never the same column as you implement the other incremental refresh on. This is a separate column. Okay, I don't have this as an example now, but if you're interested in this, make sure to have a look at the learn more section. And then last but not least, in the picture below here, you can actually see what refresh policy you have applied. 
And with all this, you have actually uh, set it all up and you're good to go. So you can click on apply right now. Perfect. Now, with this set here, if you now upload your data set, you can upload it to a pro or premium workspace. So I can go to home, publish, save our changes. And in this case, I just want to publish it to my premium per user workspace, but know that you can also do it to your pro workspace. There we go. Let me fast forward this for you. There we go. So now we can actually open our workspace. There we go. And up there in our workspace, we can now see that only the following months are showing. So there's January until April 2022. Now, what is happening in the background? So the first time that you upload your incremental refresh, uh, Power BI will actually set the partitions. So if you have a very big data set, it's going to make some smart partitions so you can actually see, hey, this year's is going to be refreshed and these years don't have to be refreshed. So it might mean that your first refresh that you're putting on, uh, on there, it might take a little bit longer than you expected. But after all the partitioning is set and the environment is built for your incremental refresh, all your refreshes will be quicker. So in this case, we all just saw that there were only four months of data. And let's see what happened after we refresh our data here. Okay, so at this point, our data is refreshed. And let's have a look at what that looks like in our uh, in our report. So we refreshed all of this. And if we now go to the, the report that's connected, instead of just showing 2022, it now shows the history that we configured. Now, my data set only cont uh, contains data till 2020. But even if you configured it differently for your set, you should be able to see it here. Okay, that's how it works. So every subsequent refresh from now on will only refresh the part that fits within the policy of your incremental refresh. Now, there's a few limitations that you need to think about. Because if I go to my workspace now, the first big disadvantage is the following. If I want to download my file, it's not possible anymore with an incremental refresh policy. So if I click here, you'll see the pop-up in the top here that our file cannot be downloaded anymore because it uses incremental refresh. So have a good look at what that means for you. In the future, if you want to make a change, you actually need to have saved this file somewhere. Otherwise, you won't be able to make the change. And after you make the change locally, you'll have to re-upload it and it might have to apply the incremental refresh policy over and over again. Now that's mostly happening if you're working with a pro workspace. Because in a pro workspace, it's difficult to directly connect to your data set. Maybe if you work with the API, it can work, but not with something easy as tabular editor. Now, in a premium per user or a premium capacity workspace, on the other hand, you're actually able to still change the data set. And I think for those purposes, it's much easier to work with incremental refresh. Let me show you how that works. So if you want to work with data sets that have incremental refresh, and at some point you need to edit the data model or create some measures, you can actually go to the settings pane of that page. You can click on, let's see, premium, and it shows a workspace connection down here. So the workspace connection that shows on the settings of your workspace, you can use that to connect to tabular editor. So if I copy this, I can go to tabular editor, click on file, open, and then I click on model from database and I just paste the link in the top here for, for the server. Now I'm going to click OK here. Log into my account. And after doing all that and selecting my incremental refresh, we're actually able to see the model that we have here and any changes that we want to make, we can actually do it here, like delete this measure that doesn't work. And I can then up here, just save the changes back to the currently connected database. And this will then be reflected in the data set online in the Power BI service. So this is a downside that you should be very aware of before you start going into incremental refresh, because not everybody is comfortable with these tools. Now, can I give some other tips here? 
Actually, when you're working with incremental refresh, you might want to apply this to a data flow. So you can apply your incremental refresh to a data flow. So that is the one that actually gets a little bit of data all the time. Then you can create a separate Power BI report that is your data set, which will connect to that data flow. And in the future, then, if you need to make any adjustments, you can just do that in the, in the data set, whereas the data flow can remain the same for, the, for them. Then even if you wanted to, you could even have a lean report that just connects to the data set so that you have the data flow separate from the data set and the report separate from the data set as well. That's the choice you have to make. Now, with all that, that's all I wanted to say about incremental refresh. It's also for the, the Data Platform 500 certification. So have a good look at that. And for any questions or remarks, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear about it. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank <laughs> you.